Okay, so what we're going to do here in this video is have a look at three different triangle centers, individually to start with, and then we'll have a look at all three together. And so the first one is the centroid. Now the centroid is formed by finding the midpoint of each side, and then by connecting it to the vertex that's opposite that midpoint. So we can see we've just done that from each of the midpoints across to the opposite vertex. So from this midpoint across to there and so on. Now as we do that on each of the midpoints, we find that the lines all intersect at a common point. And that point is the centroid. So that's how we find that. Now the second triangle center is the orthocenter. And we find the orthocenter by dropping a right angle line from each of the vertices down to the opposite side. So we can see that's what's happened here. We've dropped a line from there across to this side and have made a right angle there from this vertex across to this side with a right angle there and from there to there with the right angle. And that's our second triangle center. Now the third and the last one we're going to look at is the circumcenter. And the circumcenter is formed by going back to the midpoint and by putting a right angle line through the midpoint. So it's a right angle to the side that the midpoint is on. And we do that for each of the sides. We put a right angle line through the midpoint and we find that all of those lines again coincide at a common point, the circumcenter. The circumcenter also has the special property of being the center of a circle that will just touch each of the vertices. So we can see that this circle will just touch each of the vertices and its center is located at the circumcenter. And so it's also possible if we rearrange this triangle to get the circumcenter to sit outside of the triangle itself. And so if we return to the drawing of the circle, we can see that the circle is still touching each of the vertices, although the centre of that circle, the circumcenter, it now exists outside of the triangle itself. So it's possible for triangle centres to exist outside of the triangle that they are associated with. Now if we draw all three of these triangle centres together, I'm just going to straighten up that triangle. We could zip back through the interactive just to see how those triangle centers have all ended up where they are. So there's the centroid, the orthocenter, and the circumcenter. And the interesting property that emerges when we consider all three is that it's always possible to draw a straight line that will go through all three of them. And we can show that there. And it doesn't matter that how we rearrange the points or the vertices of the triangle. And so we have different triangle centers it's always possible to draw a straight line through the three centers so that whether the centers are inside the triangle or outside of it we can always draw a straight line through the centers. This line is known as Euler's line after the mathematician who discovered that property of triangle centers that they can always exist on a straight line. Now that suggests a couple of interesting investigations and there is an investigation associated with this interactive here so we could explore this a bit further with the aid of the notes that are attached to this. I'm not going to go into that apart from to mention just one or two points so that one of the things that naturally comes to mind when you start to explore this is is it possible to get all three of those points to coexist on a common point so that can we get them all to overlap and it looks as though we're getting close there. Then if we do manage to get them to coexist, is there anything special about this particular triangle? And so to check our potential hunches about what's going on there, we've got a couple of tools we can use here. We've got a protractor that could be used to measure the angles of these, um, of these triangles. And we've also got a ruler that could be used to measure the side length. So if we had any hunches as to what's going on there, then those tools could be useful. So there's a couple of other things that could be explored here. We could investigate then what's happening there when we've got a point on a side and a point on a vertex. Is there anything special about that triangle? Another point that's addressed in the investigation is the relative distance between these points. And so that you can notice that the, the cross or the orthocenter is always further away from the diamond, the centroid, than the circle is. So as we drag those around, we can see that that always holds, that the circle is always closer to the diamond and we could take some measurements to see if we could work out a pattern that predicts the relative distances between these points. So that's the kind of thing that is suggested for further exploration, but it's all basically built on the idea 
that these triangle centres all exist on a common line and the line is known as Euler's line.